carry our worship services on Sunday as well as our Wiley Drake show during the week on the radio, crusaderadio.com. And then, of course, as you know, we've branched out. We carry the Wiley Drake show that's on crusaderadio.com. I have to comb my hair now, and, and I can't, you know, uh, so we do TV. Uh, we turn the television cameras on, and the guys are doing a great job. We're playing a lot of stuff prior to the program. Uh, Dr. Clyde Rivers suggested uh, two things. He said, I like the program, I like the television program, but, uh-oh, uh -oh, here comes that but. <laughs> he said, but uh, we're really into praise and worship, and I think you ought to do something. So we're doing praise and worship now at 8.30 in the morning. At 8.30 every day, from 8.30 to 9, we do one half hour of praise and worship, music, videos, performances, everything. And so we're doing that from 8.30 to 9. That's on Ustream.tv, and you can watch it. And then at 9 o'clock, we do the Wiley Drake Show, which is a talk show, which is where I take in callers. We deal with current subjects. We deal with news uh, situations and so forth. And then at 5 o'clock, we do the same show, but at 4.30, we do praise and worship again. If you know anyone that is Christian, that love the Lord, and want to sing or play or come on television, that half hour is open. We have to, the guys have to put it together every day. And so it would be great for someone you have that's a friend that would say, I'd like to come and play my guitar and sing and praise the Lord and take 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, and then that would be uh, something they don't have to do, <laughs> and that would benefit them as well as benefit everybody else. So if you know of anyone that would like to come and sing, if they'd like to come and uh, recite poetry, they'd like to come and share some of their work, you know, sometimes <clears throat> people are poets and don't know it, but their feet show it because they're long fellows. No. Anyway, <laughs> this TV is trying to make a stand-up comic out of me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we do encourage. Sometimes they, they want to sing, they want to play, and in all honesty, they may not be very good. And somebody says, well, no, we're not going to invite you over because you're not very good. Well, how do you get good? You, you know, you got to practice, and, and you got to get before the people. So anyway, just make that away. At uh, 8.30 every morning and at 4.30 every afternoon, Monday through Friday, call me or call Corey, and we'll be glad to set it up for you. All right. Now, it is our greeting time. Greeting to CrusadeRadio.com. Greeting to our international, worldwide audience on Ustream.tv. When we broadcast from uh, the Supreme Court three days when we were back there, a little boy came up with his iPhone, or smartphone, Android, whatever it was. I don't know all that stuff. But uh, anyway, he came up and said, do you know you have 9,314 listeners? <laughs> I said, no, but I'm glad <laughs> and glory. Praise the Lord. So anyway, it's growing and, and praise go to God. We're going to lift up Jesus, whatever we do. We're going to stay involved. We're going to do what God leads us to do. So greetings to both radio and television. And now it's time for this audience to greet each other. So would you please shake hands, give a holy hug, a holy kiss, whatever the Lord would allow you to do, and uh, greet one another uh, on this, our Lord's Day. All right. Do your greeting and then make your way back to your seat. God bless you. God bless you. Good bless you. God bless you, brother. What's your name? Meet you, Deacon. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Huh? Oh, I thought you looked a little bit familiar. <laughs> your daddy can't deny you, brother. <laughs> hey, God bless you. What's your name? Moses. All right. God bless you. Amen. 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 All right. Make your way back to your seat area, but don't be seated yet. If you're seated already, I would ask you to join me and 1,387,000 people on the call to fall. So would you go to your knees, please, and you can repeat this prayer after me, or you can just agree with it, whatever the Lord lays on your heart. This is my prayer, and I would encourage you to repeat after me. I will answer God's call to fall. On my knees, 
in humility and repentance so that he might forgive my sin and heal our land. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may return to your seat. Now, Brother Paul Williams and Mrs. Drake at the keyboard of the piano is going to lead us as we praise the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, come up here. Come up here. You got to come up here to do it. You're younger than I am, so I don't walk that far. Not by much. It's Bob's birthday today. And he's, yes, and he said he'd call in. We could say happy birthday, but we need to say it before he does. All right, yes. Happy birthday, Bob. Bob. How old is he now? Do you know? You don't know. Uh, well, <laughs> he's, uh, well, hopefully he'll call. But uh, if not, we might just call him. <laughs> All right. He, he's in his 80s, though. Pray for Bob. Bob's going through some real struggles. And uh, yes, ma'am, do you have something? Oh, okay. All right, let's uh, praise the Lord. Brother Paul Williams and Mrs. Drake are going to lead us now as we praise the Lord. Uh, the Bible says we're to go before the Lord with praises. And even the great men of God in the Bible, uh, before they sent the army, they sent the choir out uh, talking about how important music was before the battle. And so as we fight the battle, let us send the choir i.e. the choir up here, and if you'd like to be a part of that choir, all you got to do is come up there. Like I said last week, just check your pulse, and if you've got a pulse, you qualify, all right? <laughs> and bring a book with you when you come. But anyway, they're going to lead us. We're going to praise the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Somebody find Will. We've got a problem here with the microphone. Well, go ahead. That's okay. Go ahead. They can hear you. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus, the Nazarene, and wonder how on earth he could ever, oh, it's not in there, but uh, he could ever love me, a sinner, condemned, unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love to me. Let's sing it together. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned and clean. How oh, marvelous, how oh, wonderful, and my song shall I be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love for me for me it was in the garden he prayed not my will be thine but thine he had no tears for his own Greeks, but sweat drops of blood for mine. Yes, how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows. He made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. Yes, how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love for me when with the ranks 
Summed in glory, his face at last shall see. Twill be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. Sing it, choir. How far away, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior love for me. And on page number 634, page 634, <coughs> we're going to sing one more song for celebrating our country. My country, tis of thee. It's on, there you go. Sweet land of liberty. Of thee I sing. I trust and pray that you had a, as good a week this past week as I did. I thank the Lord as we celebrated our country's birthday. I cried, I praised the Lord, I cheered. And, and just to listen to the words of affirmation for our nation. You know, our pastor, the last two weeks, has been on a mission from Texas to Washington and it's on it's on okay and uh, we are i'm thankful that sing one now it's off again it's off again i am thankful that the lord has enabled him and i you know i just count him as my uh, as my ambassador because he's doing the things i would love to be able to do and as we've seen historic things take place in our baptist convention and then our nation would swear, Lord, bring us back to our roots. Man. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Let it ring. Now it's on. There you go. That's, that's, that's got it for right now. Testing still, yes. I won't touch it. <laughs> My country, tis of thee. Sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, land free. My native country, thee, the noble free, thy name I love. I love thy rocks and rills, thy woods and templed hills, and thard with rapture thrills like that above let music swell the breeze and ring from all the trees sweet freedom song let mortal tongues awake and let all the breathe partake let rocks their silence break that sound prolong our fathers god to thee author of liberty to thee we sing long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light, protect us by thy might, great God, our King. Dude, come down front, please. All right. Uh, yeah, let's let's yeah let's let's uh, let's just go right to the solo after I hope you read. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me. We apologize for the technical snafu. We got it fixed now, sounds like, and we praise God for that. Take your Bible and join with me. We're going to read two portions 
of Scripture this morning because the Scripture is very, very good for us. And uh, we're going to uh, turn to Psalms, and uh, we're going we're gonna to be looking at Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Turn to Psalm 103, and while you're turning to Psalm 103, I'm going to share another scripture with you from the New Testament. You don't need to turn to that, but turn to Psalm 103, and please stand as you see others to honor the reading of God's holy word, if you're physically able. Psalm 103 is where we're going to read in just a moment, but I want to read for you just two verses from 3 John and uh, you don't need to turn there, but it says, The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Amen? And be in health. Even as thy soul prospereth. Now turn back with me there to the book of Psalms 103. And follow along as we read from God's holy, inspired, inerrant, perfect word of God. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord Jesus, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord Jesus, O my soul, and forget not all thy benefits. We hear a lot today about benefits health benefits, social security benefits, insurance benefits. What about the benefits of God? Oh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgetteth all thine iniquities? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? who satisfies the mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Thank you. You may be seated. Let us come before the Lord as we listen to the Lord's word. And also, don't forget, Will handed me some notes from the cross. We have a memorial cross out here that has a box on it that's a prayer box. We encourage people all over to walk by here to stop and put their prayer requests in the prayer box and we take them to the prayer room every day and on sunday we bring them in here and uh, uh, there's a uh, prayer request here that says please pray for a person named mike forgiveness guidance and for a son and we praise the lord for that prayer request and another says please pray for my husband, for my children, and so forth. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you by honoring these prayer requests. We don't know the details, but you do, and we bring them before you, Lord, and ask in Jesus' name that you would indeed bless. And there was indeed, amen, Jesus, thank you, amen, and amen. And there was a $1 bill in there, and I'm going to take the liberty to place it in our cross fund box, Amen. not for our cross, but for the big cross on the mountain down in Branson. Amen. It's going to be 200 and something feet tall, and if you'd like to be a part of it, that's what this blue box is all about. After church, whenever you put your money in there, that money goes toward building the cross. These two men that are building it did not want to borrow money to build it. They want it built and paid for it so that when it's there, you can ride an elevator up to the top, cross over the cross arm of the cross, and ride an elevator down, and it will be free to everybody. They felt like the Lord led them to do that, but in that they said, we need help. And so our dollars and cents and whatever can go to help them. Whatever you put in this box goes directly to them. And so we encourage you to be a part of building that great Branson Cross, where when people go there and see it, ride up those elevators and ride back down. They will hear all about Jesus Christ. Nobody's going to be asking them for money. They're not going to be promoting anything except lifting up Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw them in unto myself. 
I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of that large cross. I may not be able to put a buck in once in a while, but I'll be able later when we see it, and we'll show you the video uh, tonight if you'd like uh, to see it on video and let you see what it's going to look like and so forth. But I would encourage you to pray and be a part of that great cross. Now, uh, Brother Paul, share with us what God has shared with you, laid on your heart, to sing for the message today. One of the things that we do not do here, and I'm not against people that do it, so please understand, but he has no idea what I'm going to preach on, and I have no idea what he's going to sing on. But it never ceases to amaze both of us. Amen. <laughs> The beautiful dovetailing that God does between the songs and the messages. And uh, so praise the Lord. Brother, share with us what God's laid on your heart. Well, the Lord had a little bit of help about three weeks ago because our pastor asked if we could sing the family of God. Well, we've been putting it on hold for Texas, for Washington, D.C., and this morning. You know, I am so thrilled to be able to sing it. If I can do so without crying, because I'm adopted. I'm in the family. Amen. I am a born-again, Christ-loving, praising, Amen. adopted Jew who is the brother of Christ and the Son of God and celebrating for it. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I'm part of the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this sun. I'm part of the family, the family of God. You will notice we say brother and sister around here. It's because we're a family and these folks are so near. When one has a heartache, we all share the tears and rejoice in each victory in the family so dear. From the door of the orphanage to the house of the king, no longer an outcast, a new song I sing. From rags unto riches, from the weak to the strong. I'm not worthy to be here, but praise God I belong. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Would you stand up and affirm it and sing it with me, the chorus together. Everyone, stand up. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain cleansed by his blood joint heirs with jesus as we travel this sod for i'm part of the family the family of god amen amen thank you sir.
turn to someone and say, I'm glad I'm in the family with you. Would you please? Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. You know, the family concept, uh, of course, is what many folk refer to as a nuclear family. That is mom and dad and kids, and grandma and grandpas and aunts and uncles and cousins and as my mama used to say, in-laws and outlaws and <laughs> in the family. But what a great opportunity to be in the family of Almighty God with our joint heir with Jesus as we do indeed travel through this life. You know, as we are living in modern terminology and modern technology, we're, our family is expanding. Uh, we have Facebook and Twitter and all kinds of other things where we can uh, have friends, and uh, I can't remember, you know, it, it's amazing. And I know there's some abuses of it, and, and I know some of you are saying, I don't want people to know what I'm doing or where I'm at. And that's okay, too. But uh, the beauty of it is, is that with all of the modern technology that we have, we have an opportunity to expand our family. I was talking with a family just this week about uh, they they have a, they're all scattered all over the country, but they Skype, which means they sit down in front of the computer and talk to each other all across the country, look at each other and talk to each other and participate back and forth. In fact, we were at dinner the other night with our family, and part of our family was gone. My daughter and her husband and the kids, some of the kids were there, and some of the kids were gone, and on the cell phone, <laughs> my daughter called, and we could see them on the screen of the cell phone while we're having uh, uh, dinner together. They're normally there, but they were out of town uh, back in New York, and so we had an opportunity uh, to visit together uh, over a cell phone screen. Now, it was a little jumpy, and it didn't look, you know, it wasn't a big screen or anything, but it was fun, and that's part of being a part of the family of God. There's all kinds of things going on. In fact, the matter is, one of the families that we have is our internet. And I started receiving this week some notices saying that we want to alert you as family that there's something going on. We're not really sure what it is. It's some kind of malware, malware, or something. And that some of the computers evidently were set up a certain way. And on Monday, there are going to be some changes made. And, and I'm not talking about something like why you, why, why 2K and all of that, but but they're, uh, they're, just, they're telling us, do this, check your computer. And so this morning, I checked my computer. I went on, and it told you how to check it to see if it was okay. And it came back and said, congratulations, your computer's okay. <laughs> now, if it hadn't have been okay, I'd have called Frank or <laughs> Davis or somebody. But it's okay. Uh, I say all of that to say our family is absolutely expanding. And I like that. We see the family deteriorating in many aspects, but we also see it expanding, and that's the beauty of that. We know, for example, now, numbers-wise, at least we think they're correct, that they're in the church itself, in our church family, not the world family, but in our church family, that there are more people divorced than there are married. What a tragedy that is in America. It's a tragedy anywhere, but what a tragedy, 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 I'll get it out in a minute. What a tragedy it is that it is in the family of God. But I'm here to tell you, friends, that's our job, to bring the family back together. <clears throat> we may be different, we may be scattered, but it's our job to bring the family back together. And um, a number of years ago, some of the family people uh, used to call me Dr. Gatorade. And that's because I got on a kick of Gatorade. I found out that Gatorade was good for you. Now, I know there's some sugars and salts in it that if you overdo, it'll be bad. But I found out that my doctor friend told me that when they bring you into the hospital for an emergency or for whatever they bring you in for, first thing they do is hang an IV. Put an IV on you. Hydrate you. Get that IV going, not only so if they have to give you medicine, they can do it without sticking you again, but that IV of that uh, water they're putting in there, and it's not water. I found out it was Gatorade. Same thing in that Gatorade that's in that IV they put on there, except for the color. 
Gatorade's green or red or purple. You know, we got to have pretty. But uh, it's the same stuff. It's good for you. So I found out I had a bad back and I had some other problems that come with age. And I found out that if I would hit that Gatorade pretty heavy and hydrate quite often, a lot of those problems would be lessened. And so I learned that for myself. And I kept preaching that to other people to the point that a lot of people referred to me as Dr. Gatorade because <laughs> I was always pushing Gatorade. And uh, they even have the Gatorade now without sugar, so it's even better. But anyway, I say all of that to say that, that we are a family and we want to help one another. Uh, there in John chapter three, uh, 3, verse 2, John expressed his concern for his family member Gaius. Not only spiritually and emotionally, but he said, I pray you'll be in good health. Be in good health. We need to get to the point where we're praying for people's health, not when they get sick, but before they get sick. Amen? And we need to learn, I'm having to learn this, that when I say to you, I'll pray for you, I need to pray for you right then, not wait till later. Because you know why? If I, if I say I'll pray for you, chances are I'm probably going to get busy and forget it. And that's not just because I'm a pastor. Everybody's that way. So when you say, I'm going to pray for you, stop right then and pray for them. Yeah. And we need to pray for people's health, one for another. You need to pray for your pastor's health. I'm healthy. God's been very good to me. And, and God has guided me and directed me. I'm 68, be 69. I was talking with some kids yesterday over in Fullerton. And a little boy, I said, how old are you? He said, I'm nine going on ten. And his little sister was there with you, and I said, and how old are you, honey? She said, well, I'm seven going on eight. And she said, how old are you? I said, I'm 68 going on 69. <laughs> so we had fun there together. But we, we need to pray one for another uh, about our health before we, quote, need it kind of thing. John said, I'm going to pray for you, Brother Gaius. Spiritual vitality and strength are attained only through physical efforts. We need, you need to pray for your pastor. You need to pray for the missionaries. You need to pray for each other. Because uh, God has chosen to work with us and through us, and in my case sometimes in spite of us. And, uh, but God works that way. God limits himself that way. Some things don't get done. Some things God don't do. And you know why? Because you don't do it. God said, I'm going to do this through the deacon. I'm going to do this through the song leader, through the piano player, through the people in the church. I'm going to do this, and then we don't do it, and so it don't get done. And then we get mad and fuss at God. How come you let this happen? How come you let that happen? How come you didn't do this? Well, you didn't do the job. You didn't do the job. A number of years ago, I was working a secular job working in a factory. Douglas Aircraft, where we were building airplanes. Boss came in one day and wanted to know why all of our tooling and everything wasn't set up, wasn't ready to go. We were building an airplane. We said, we got to build that airplane. And he said, are all the tools ready to go? And that was my job, to make sure they were. And I said, well, no, sir, they're not. He said, why not? I said, well, you didn't tell me to. He said, you worked for the company now for about four or five years. You know what your job is. Why do I have to come tell you to do it? And uh, I realized he was right. I knew what to do. I just didn't do it. There's a lot of y'all sitting out there today. You know what God needs to do. You know what needs to be done. You got a next door neighbor that's drinking beer, smoking cigarettes, cussing and raising hell. And you go, oh. Well, go, oh, but then go talk to him. Say, hey, Jesus can help you with that. Go over there and help him. Well, I don't want to butt in. Well, if I see your house on fire, I'm going to butt in. I don't care how nice you are setting up in your living room or how sleep you are in the bed. If my house is on fire, wake me up. we got a lot of people that you work with and you live with and you walk around. You need to wake them up. You need to take the word of God and say, thus saith the Lord. Will it make them mad? Yep. But that's all right. Wake them up. Wake them up. Well, the Bible says that we're to pray for one another, not only spiritually, but physically. 
and I'm going to get back in my doctor mode a little bit, and I'm going to give you a prescription today, give you a little prescription for spiritual health, and you get the benefits of physical health as well. Um, the reason that uh, I'm as healthy as I am is not because I come from a long line of healthy people. You know, my mom had trouble, my dad had trouble, uh, sort of a typical family in some respect, but the reason I'm healthy is a spiritual reason. I decided some time ago I was going to get spiritually right, whether I ever got physically right or not, and guess what? I got spiritually right, and then I got physically right. And I can tell you testimony after testimony of not only mine but others of people that when they got spiritually right, they got physically right. The prescription today is a prescription for spiritual and physical health. Number one, you need to have a strong immune system. We got a bunch of people running around washing their hands every time you go in the grocery store or come out of the grocery store. They got these little bottles of this and bottles of that. You're supposed to put it on your hands and, and wipe the doorknobs off. I don't do none of that. Now, folks, I, I, if you do that, fine. But I ain't afraid of grabbing a doorknob or touching somebody because I think I'm going to catch something because I got a good immune system. God gave me a good immune system. Spiritually speaking, we need a good immune system. An immune system wards off disease. <laughs> Without a healthy immune system, small threats can be deadly. Without a good immune system. Spiritually, how strong is our ability to withstand those germs? People say, well, y'all ought not touch the doorknob. Y'all ought to use a handkerchief or put that stuff on your hands, you know. I don't need that. I got an immune system. You sneeze in your hand, wipe it on the doorknob, I come along, grab it. It don't hurt me. My immune system fights it. We need to ward off diseases spiritually one of the first diseases that you'll catch quick and it'll tear you up is temptation that's number one on the list of bad germs temptation old devil say go ahead and do it you deserve to do it you have a right to do it you'll have fun doing it Guess what? You don't have a right, and you won't have fun. If you do, you'll still have the hangover the next day. And I'm not just picking on the drinkers. I'm talking about anything. But we need to have a strong immune system against temptation. We need some preachers that aren't afraid to preach about how women dress and how men ought to dress and how men ought to act. We need to preach against temptation. And we need to fight temptation. But there's another temptation, there's another disease out there that'll drag you down in a heartbeat. And we've got a bunch of them doing it on television. Got all their pretty hair, call themselves the Reverend Dr. Bishop, so and so and such and such. And they're leading people down the road to a false doctrine. To a false doctrine. I'm okay, you're okay, purpose this, purpose that. I'm not okay, I'm a sinner saved by grace, and I'm mean as a snake, naturally. The only way I can be anybody or somebody is through Jesus Christ. And it's not going to happen through somebody's book. I'm not against books, I'm a book writer. But we need to have immunity to temptation. That means stay out of some areas. I talked to a guy just this week. He's back in jail. Called me and said, pray for me, I'm in jail. Okay, I'll pray for you. And I prayed for him right there on the phone. And I talked to him. I said, what are you doing in jail? He said, well, and then he told a story. Went back to his old buddy's house. He got out of jail, got off the dope, got off things. Went back to see an old buddy. They were sitting around talking, thought I wouldn't be. Yeah, let's just smoke a joint. Ain't no big deal. Just one little cigarette. Just one little joint. Just smoke one little joint. Well, as it turned out, it was a big deal. And he ended up back in jail. 
because he followed false teaching. The teaching was, I need to go back to my old friends. Well, if those old friends were as mean as you were, you need to stay away from them. And so we need to have immunity against temptation and against false teaching. And there's another one we need to be careful of, and people don't like it too much, but we need to have an immunity against persecution. We're praying for people in China that are being persecuted, you know, and even executed because they're Christians. We need to pray against. We need to have a strong immune system. People say, well, why are you always talking about China? Why are you always talking about this or that? Why do you bring up all those bad things? Because we need to build up an immunity to those kind of things. We need to have an immunity to temptation, an immunity to false teaching, and an immunity to persecution. We need to face the inevitable. Folks, you're going to get in trouble. I got news for you. You're going to get in trouble. Well, I'm not, an, I'm not an ex-alcoholic. I'm not an ex-drug addict. I, you're still going to get in trouble. You're still going to get in trouble. we all going to get in trouble. So that's the inevitability of it. But with a strong immune system, we'll be able to take heed lest we fall, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 12. And if we will be able to live, Paul said to the Ephesian church, circumspectly. In Ephesians 5.15. We'll also be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. Paul said, that old devil's wily. I don't like it when I say that, but <laughs> for obvious reasons. But he is wily. And he'll lead you astray in a heartbeat. We need to have an immunity against him. And we need to stop sometimes. And people don't like it when I say this sometimes, but I say when the devil comes on me and the devil's coming after me, I stop and say, devil, go to hell. That's where you came from. That's where you belong. God in his mercy has seen fit to let you wander around a little bit. I don't know why God does that, but that's his business, not mine. But we need to face the inevitability of what's going to happen and with a strong immune system, we can take heed lest we fall. We can be able to walk circumspectly, and we'll be able to stand against the old devil. In fact, the matter is, people are all like, you know, they know I travel a lot and go here and go there. Somebody will say, well, what have you been doing, preacher? I say, I've been putting the devil on the run. Matt Staver and his dear wife Anita work for Liberty Council, very godly man and woman, man and wife, do a great job helping some of us guys get in trouble. They're lawyers, both of them, and uh, they're good people, and a very sophisticated, very high class, and I'll never forget this as long as I live. I called down to Liberty Council one time, and, and I said, uh, how are things going, and and uh, Anita, his wife, answered. Now, you got to remember, she's a very beautiful woman, very godly, very dignified, very high class. And I said, well, what's been going on, Anita? And I guess probably my influence on her or something. But she said, we've been kicking old scaly butt. And I almost dropped the telephone. Here she is, this super sophisticated, super good-looking, super lady. And she said, we've been kicking old scaly butt. And I knew what she was talking about. She was talking about some cases they had just won and beat the devil and sent him traveling. And the Bible says he is old scaly. He's an old dragon. The Bible describes him as scaly and slimy and all those kind of things. And uh, she was excited. And then she said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said, hey, that's a good saying. I said, but I'm going to tell on you. <laughs> so, Anita, I'm telling the story again. Every time I run into them somewhere, she'll say, buddy, are you still telling that story? I said, yep, told it on Sunday. <laughs> but we need to understand, folks, we can have fun. We don't have to be stuffy, but we do have to have a good immune system to fight the devil and send him on his way. But we need to have a strong immune system in order to be healthy spiritually and physically. By the way, all of this prescription works both ways, spiritually and physically. 
Because the Bible says you got a body, you got a soul, and you got a spirit. You're three if you love Jesus. But we are to understand what God is saying to us. We need to have a strong immune system. That's why we encourage you to come to church. That's why we encourage you to watch. That's why we're putting, you know, a lot of people say, well, you just want your face on television. Well, if I said I didn't like that, I'd lie, you know, and I'm not going to lie. But that's not the reason for doing it. The reason for doing it is because we want people, even if they can't come to church or won't come to church, we want people to be able to hear the gospel. We want them to be able to hear that you can have a good immune system against the devil. Secondly, though, we not only need a good immune system, but you need regular exercise. Regular exercise. Your doctor will tell you that in a heartbeat. He may be overweight or whatever, but he's going to tell you you need exercise. Regular. We thrive only when we're active. When I was in the Navy and a new Christian, it was one of the things they allowed us to do when we were on liberty. That is, when we were off the ship and, and, and on duty, still had to have our uniform on. But they allowed us to roll up our shirt sleeve on our uniform. And some guys came up with a, like an American flag underneath, so they turn it up and they show a flag. I went into the embroidery shop one day and I said, I want something put on my cuff. So when I'm out on liberty, I can turn the cuff up. And he said, well, what do you want it to say? And I gave it to him, and he embroidered it on my cuff. And it said, Christians are like tea. How many tea drinkers we got here? All right. Christians are like tea. You put a tea bag in cold water, what happens? You don't get much. But you put it in hot water... You get good, strong tea. And the longer it's in hot water, the stronger it gets. When we serve the Lord as a pastor, as a deacon, as a church member, doesn't matter what. Sometimes you get in hot water. You get in hot water. Well, you shouldn't have said it that way. I get in hot water. You witness to your friends while well, you're pushing your religion on me. You get in hot water. But just like that tea bag, when you get in hot water, your real strength comes out. The real strength comes out when you get in hot water. So you need regular exercise. And you thrive only when you're active. And you must have that spiritual activity. We've been created to walk in good work. The Bible said you're to walk in good works. I hear people all that. Well, it ain't work. You're not saved by works. No, but I'm supposed to walk in work. I'm supposed to do work. One of the most damnable heresies around is that when it says, well, we're saved by grace. Saved by grace. Don't have to do nothing. Well, that's only part right. Part right's part lie. Part right means some wrong. And I can't do enough good things to earn my salvation. No way. Because it was too costly. It cost Jesus his life blood. But the Bible says we are to work out our spirituality, according to the book of Hebrews. And, and we're to have that spiritual activity. We have to be saved in order to serve but we need to be active in order to continue to serve. Amen? So we need to have a strong immune system. What is your immune system? I hope it will be the word of God. I hope it will be your commitment to God. We need to have not only a strong immune system, but we need to have that regular exercise, attend church. We need to exercise ourselves unto godliness, uh, Paul told young Timothy. Paul told young Timothy, and Paul, T Timothy would have known about exercise. He was a runner, probably, and uh, he knew about good exercise. But Paul said, you need good exercise in the Lord. You need to get out there where the getting, where the getting gets going. We must work while there is time, Paul said to the church at Galatians. Time's getting short. We need to work while it's still daylight. My daddy used to come in, wake us up in the middle of the night, I thought. 
He'd come in there early in the morning, about 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, and say, get up, boy, you're burning daylight. You're burning daylight. A lot of Christians are burning daylight. They're just wandering around doing nothing for the Lord. They ought to be doing something for the Lord. We can work most effectively within the framework of a local New Testament church. I am so proud to be a Southern Baptist. I am especially proud because now we're on a new kick of starting more churches. And I love that. I think we ought to plant more churches. We've got 48,000 Southern Baptist churches around the world. I'd love to see us have 100,000 churches around America because churches do the work of God. That's where Jesus said he was going to work. I'm sorry for all you home Bible study teachers, and I'm sorry for all you planning groups and all these other groups, but Jesus said, I'm going to build my church. And the devil will not prevail against it. So we need to have a great immune system. We need to have regular exercise. And then last but not least, or thirdly rather, you need to have rest. Jesus talked about it. I'm firmly convinced when it said Jesus said, the Bible says he must needs go by Samaria. He was on a trip. And he was on a mission. But I'm firmly convinced he went that way because the cooler weather was there. And he wanted to rest a little bit. And Jesus rested. And he told us to rest. Energies and resources need replenishing. That's why we need to rest in the Word of God. We function best alternating between work and rest. I'm a workaholic, and I have to be careful that I don't just work and work and work, and then the next thing I know, I'm, I said, Lord, what's wrong with me? How come I can't? How come I don't have no energy? Lord said, dummy, you hadn't rested. Get some rest. And by the way, for those of you who want to be my Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell me when to rest. Don't try to tell me when I need to rest. But we need to rest. Rest is important. We must blend together our rest in the Lord and our working for the Lord. And so please, please do that. We function best when we alternate that. Spiritual rest doesn't mean doing nothing. <laughs> Some of the greatest sermons I've ever preached came to me in nap time. I learned a few years ago to... I used to wonder why my grandpa took naps. I used to wonder why my wife's grandfather, he had a barber shop in Denver, Colorado for 47 years. And he'd cut hair all day long, and about halfway through, he'd plop down and take a nap. And I used to wonder, well, what's he doing that for? Now, no. <laughs> it was because of the rest. We function best when we alternate between work and rest. Spiritual rest doesn't mean doing nothing, though. God will speak to you during your rest. God will, that's what dreams are all about, folks. But if you're so tired, you just crash. You hadn't rested in so long, you wonder why I didn't go. Why don't God speak to me in dreams? I have people call me up all the time. But Pastor White, I heard you say God told you something in a dream. I, I don't ever dream. And without exception, when I talk to those kind of people, I find out they don't rest either. <laughs> they go and go and go and go and finally just die. And they wonder why God don't give them a dream. Wonder why God don't speak to them in their dream. Well, because they're not resting. They're just dying. <laughs> you know, they should have rested a little sooner. So we need a great immune system based on the word of God. We need regular exercise based on the word of God. We need periodic rest. Jesus said, Feeding our minds with things of virtue and good report. Those are restful things. And then last but not least, we not only need a great immune system and all these other things, but we need great food. We need a great diet. A great diet. Providing spiritual nourishment from the Word of God. 
Uh, we don't live by bread alone, Jesus said, or, but by the word of God. The Lord's words are the very words of life. David said, I considered them uh, as very necessary for life. I would challenge anyone, I don't care who you are, most of us like two or three meals a day, pretty regular. My question to you is, how many spiritual meals do you have every day? Most people, starting in the pulpit, say, well, I have one, you know, or maybe one every other day. We need to have spiritual food in our diet, and we need to avoid junk food. Junk food's not good for you. It may be fun, but it's not good for you. I'm going to get McDonald's mad at me now, but the only thing they've got worth eating in that place is breakfast. The rest of it is junk. And, we need, and I, that's why I don't go there. We need to avoid junk food. The Bible refers to that which is sound doctrine. There's also that which is opposite sound doctrine. We have a lot of people running around saying, all you got to do is have feel-good religion. Well, I like to feel good too. I like good music. I like good praise worship services. And those are fun, but you need to have some solid food. Paul said the problem in the early church was they were all a bunch of babies. He said, I'd love to give you a big steak. But he said, I've got to give you milk because you're still a baby. You choke on it. We need to have a good diet. We need to have good spiritual nourishment. We need to avoid spiritual junk food. And uh, you know what it is. I don't have to describe it to you because I make some of you mad if I describe what your junk food is. But... Um, we also need to have this strong, strong prescription for spiritual health. A healthy diet, periodic rest, regular exercise, together will build a strong immune system. Do you have a good diet? Do you have a good plan? I would encourage you to go to God's Word and learn about His plan. Let me tell you about another plan. Many, many years ago, there was a little track that was printed up, and I love it. It says, God loves you and has a spiritual plan for your life. I want to say to you here this morning, the Bible says there are three things you need to do to become a Christian. Number one, you must acknowledge Jesus as God. Number two, you must acknowledge that you can't save yourself. And number three, you must invite him into your heart and into your life. That's why we always give an invitation. Because you can know Jesus is God. A lot of people know Jesus is God. In fact, the matter is, you just got to really be stuck on stupid not to believe that Jesus is God. Now, talking about Christians, now I'm just talking about just normal people. When you consider the evidence, when you see what has happened over all these years, to say that Jesus is not God is stuck on stupid. But you can know Jesus is God and still die and go to hell. You can know that you can't do enough good to get saved yourself and still die and go to hell. What Jesus said is you must understand who I am, what I can do, but then you must ask me to do it. He's not going to force it on you. Jesus could, but he's not going to do it. He's made it very clear that you must invite him into your heart and into your life. So with that in mind, would you bow your heads on radio and on television, here in the sanctuary? Would you pray a prayer with me? You can pray it silently, out loud. It really doesn't matter. You can pray it in English or Spanish or Korean or Pray it whatever tongue you want to pray it in. But if you will pray a prayer with me, acknowledging that Jesus is God, 
acknowledging that you can't save yourself and ask him to come into your heart and in your life. I promise you based on the authority of God's word, he'll do that. Pray this prayer. I acknowledge and I know that Jesus is God. I acknowledge and I know I can't save myself. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and into my life right now. Right here in this sanctuary at 6801 Western, listening all over the world on Ustream television, listening all over the world on Crusade Radio, I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart and into my life. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I want to ask you here in the sanctuary to acknowledge that to me. Would you just slip your hand up and write back down if you prayed that prayer? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Let me, based on the authority of God's holy word, say to you, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, Jesus Christ came into your heart and into your life, and you are now a born-again Christian. You're on your way to heaven. You have Christ as your Lord and Savior. You're my brother. You're my sister in Christ now. And as Brother Bob, our Brother Paul said a while ago, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. And I want to say welcome to you in the family of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I want to ask our ushers to come, and they're going to pass the plates. Give you an opportunity to give to God to help this ministry continue around the world and in Buena Park, California. May God bless you as you give each gift and each giver. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would bless each gift and each giver. For those that could give and those that couldn't give, we pray your richest blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to ask you to stand. We're going to have our hymn of invitation. If God gave you something that you need to make a public declaration about, uh, Brother Wiley Jr. will be up here at the front. I'll be here at the front. As we sing this song, May the Lord lead you. Don't you dare come because I ask you to. But don't you dare not come if Jesus asks you to. Number 312 in your hymn book is where we're going to be singing. Lead us, brother. Page 312, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, friend. He's calling you to come home. Come down this aisle. Greet our pastors and con confess your new relationship with Jesus Christ. For Christ said, if you will confess me publicly, I will confess you before my Father which is in heaven. Will you come as we sing? Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. This is for you.
Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling. Oh, sinner, come home. Thank you, brother. God bless you. I'm going to ask my son to make his way to the pulpit and get us up in prayer today. Before we go, I want to ask you to pray on the 12th. I'm going back to Mississippi for a special meeting. And uh, sure. this is in reference to the start of training. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the word that was given to us today, Lord, through the preach word and through the songs, Lord. Pray that you'd help us to apply it to our lives, Lord. We do thank you for being a part of the family of God, Lord. Just help us to look out for each other like a family and just to share that love to all those around us, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.